Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is up? It is Monday, July 28th, 2014, and welcome to Mostly Walking. My name is Sean Plott. My name is Bill Grainer. And my name is Sean Bouchard. And we're actually doing a show after months of trying, and it's called Mostly Walking, where we're just going to play old school adventure games that may or may not be good. Um, <laughs> getting this show live was impossible. Uh, it is amazingly complex to play a game that is made in 1993 with other people. But uh, we're going to do it, and it's going to be King's Quest VI is our very first game. And before we do anything game-related, let us introduce our delightful host, Bill it's your birthday week. I understand that you have a birthday every single day this week. Yeah. I try to be reborn, uh, but atheistically, I guess. Not not militant or anything, but I just find that having many birthdays is better for getting together with people when you're an adult and you have so many things going on, like uh, shows. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, any time someone wants to hang out with me, I'm like, well, I have three lunches a week open. You get to pick one. And they're full this week and the next week, so... Yeah, your birthday doesn't work for me. Can, can we reschedule for another time? Exactly. So mm. this way you can have as many birthdays as you want, as long as you fit them all within one week, and then you get rollover minutes, and you get nights and weekends free. <laughs> well, Bill, I have to ask, what are you drinking this fine evening? Uh, I'm drinking uh, something um, from uh, one, of the, one of the wine zones in my immediate vicinity. This is uh, from Anaba Winery. It's a blend, a white blend, from 2011. And uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's a little bit austere, but it's got just enough pep. So, uh, I don't know. I can't tell if you made it. it. <laughs> Dude, I like how much pep that wine has, Bill. It's, <laughs> I, yeah, beers are hoppy, but wines are peppy, actually, uh, because of the peppers a- and the tannins. That's right. Here's this, a little known trick about uh, about sparkling whites is that if you put enough sugar in them, they taste just like ginger ale. <laughs> That's actually how ginger ale's made. That's great. That's good. Well, well, Sean, please introduce yourself. Who are you? I am uh, Sean Bouchard. I'm so excited to be back with the two of you guys. It's been like a year and a half since the last episode of Meditating. Yeah. And I have missed this, man. I am like... I am pumped to be back here. Yeah. And, and what a better game to choose than King's Quest VI. I know. I'm, 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 I'm vibrating. I'm so excited about King's Quest VI. So, <laughs> yes. so uh, Sierra, Sierra was my posse when I was growing up. Sierra was what I was all about. And it was mostly the Quest for Glory series, which is less yeah. popular, but a shout out for Quest for Glory. Uh, uh, but I did play a lot of the King's Quest games, and Six especially is a favorite. Like this came back over and over and over again in my life, so I'm psyched. Yeah, because I know because like one and two were good, and yeah. five and six were good. Three and four are apparently bad. I've never played them. But you and I, Sean, we sat and we played seven together, and that was seven was amazing. It was awful, amazing. That is the <laughs> worst game I've ever enjoyed thoroughly before. It was so bad. <laughs> that is oh. Incredible. It was just ah, oh, it's a window into another time. <laughs> <laughs> It really is. You know... Like when you could get away with that kind of shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like when nothing made any sense, actually. So here's here's the part where I want to introduce the game that we're uh, playing, because at the start of every new game, we're going to just introduce a little bit of historical relevance to the game, because, you know, there's a lot of big multiplayer focus, a lot of Twitch action games nowadays. But way back when, when Dungeons & Dragons existed it kind of branched into the first two big game genres. Well, maybe that's an overstatement, but it did branch into the RPG, which is all the stat-focused games like your Final Fantasies, and then the storytelling side of Dungeons & Dragons, which is what the adventure games that we're going to play are. So if you've never played Dungeons & Dragons, a huge part of it is asking the dungeon master what 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 do you see in the world and they give you these elaborate descriptions so you, your imagination can can create something. And that's what King's Quest uh, is, is very much so in the vein of. So, in fact, look at is one of the core verbs in the game. Just to look at stuff and have a narrator tell you stuff. So we're going to be doing that a lot. And um, what's what's weird is that the, the, the game of it is basically finding an object to fit a door, more or less. You yeah. know, it's like the farmer is not going to stop blocking the gateway to the city unless you give him a rake. 
So you have to find someone who has a rake, but they won't give you the rake unless you can give them a melon. So then you got to get a melon and you give it to them and so on and so forth. So some of the some of the logic doesn't make any sense, and that's exactly why we're playing them because the the game design is in some ways charming, in other ways awful. And we I, I I'm switching over to the main screen here. So this is King's Quest VI. We're gonna go into the game and you're gonna see exactly what I mean immediately. But guys, how about first a cutscene? Yes, Ooh, please. Can we? Okay. I want now, that 1993 CGI. Okay, here we go. Opening. Here is the start of King's Quest VI. Look at this. Wait, here comes the music. Oh, yeah. There's that loot. Oh. Ooh. Oh, look at that torch. It has like four frames of burning. It's so good. Oh, uh... look at that. <laughs> that chainmail shirt she has, Alexander, too. Alexander, <laughs> here you are. Oh, you're still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? I suppose I am. Son, backstory, it's been backstory, months. backstory, backstory. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about oh. the land of the Green Isles? <laughs> the, the framing no. of this shot. No one's even heard. Yeah, he's yeah. just it's examining like the just shelf vanished. that is the front I of her wish body. I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. <laughs> I'll try, mother. Would Alexander stop staring right at his mother's crotch? <laughs> like he's looking straight at it. You can never go home, Alexander. I, I sort of I have the impression that they had her face animated, but it was so bad they just cut the top and cut the bottom. Well, you know, uh, game designers, are, the developers are still having problems with animating their face, so not surprised. Ooh. Wow. That's, what is... That's I love the, the realistic glitching. Yeah. Yeah, is the camera supposed to be kind of doing that little three steps uh, forward, two steps it back? It is not, no. Uh oh. Well, when my mirror glows in a game in 1993, I just <laughs> go into it. Oh. Oh, I'm getting sick, man. This is this is like harder than playing Portal on an Oculus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that uh, the? She's the woman from um, Prince of Persia. Alexander, <laughs> I feel so alone. I don't know what to do. It's just Alexander, I wish you were here. Kasima, wait! Mother! Mother, come quick! This wait, so he's so his love interest is his mother? Is it's Alexander, what on earth? You're white as a ghost. Mother, <laughs> I saw Kasima. She was in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes! <laughs> And it showed me how to find her. <laughs> how? The stars. This would all make sense, the guys. I saw you're, the stars the outside her window. Days. I can navigate I by the stars. I'd only oh, be alarmed Alexander. if she was in the normal If you mirror. really go... It will be all right, Mother. I promise. This is beautiful. This is yeah. amazing. Oh my god, that's either a blue desert or water. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it's one of those magic eyes where I'm gonna cross my eyes and see something 3D. I remember this being like so amazing. Really? Yeah, th th this like won an award for graphics and music. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. This was cutting edge. That bird is just like a bottle. <laughs> the birds aren't rigged. They're it, not. No, they're not rigged. He's actually just a they're paper not, towel. No, I don't think they're rigged at all. <laughs> a paper oh. towel roll of just. Ooh. There we go. Okay. We got some flash joints. There we go. You know, guys, this reminds me that, in a real way, film and video games are coming together. 
an unprecedented degree. Right in front of us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is the first time that uh, humanity had ever considered the third dimension. Yeah. <laughs> Really considered it. Oh yeah, this is just beautiful and glitchy, and he's so intent on looking that they don't have to animate him. <laughs> so, and what so is he doing on the boat? Nothing hard. <laughs> so it's not supposed to glitch. Is that just because it's uh, we're running ancient technology or something? Yeah, I think. That's yeah, this is. It's just so old. Yeah. This is long. Oh, this it's an island. This is really long. This is like, uh... This is a lot of, like... Pretty slow-paced exposition. Land ho! People land had a lot of time ho! in this piece. We have oh, to God. go I find my her. land ho! I know. Is that... 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 This is... That's actually kind of pretty. I love that the sky and the clouds is literally the exact same texture mapping as the water, just spread out more. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so we got... We got this prince character. And he's got some kind of a love interest. For sure. Who appeared in the mirror. Yeah. And we're assuming it's somewhere across an ocean for some reason. Apparently. But he doesn't know which ocean. He's been just traveling. I mean, he's just going in a random direction, right? Yeah, I mean, this guy's kind of crazy. He saw his girlfriend in a mirror and he just got onto a boat and went. Yeah. Just off. Uh, That's now he's gonna now he's gonna fail to poke himself. He's gonna get some rocks. Who does he think he is, really? Well, that's our show. I hope you guys enjoyed the viewing <laughs> of this introduction. Da, 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 da. Berta Williams and Jane Jensen. Both of whom have had a uh, resurgence recently thanks to Kickstarter. Which is interesting. Alright, I'm gonna I'm just gonna hit escape. Now here's a great thing. When the cutscene's done, it just restarts the entire game. <laughs> that's that's amazing. But I get to see this logo again. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, I, I forgot to mention that, uh, Sean, I believe you're also drinking a white wine today. That's true. I'm drinking a wine that I picked out because it's called Glen Ellen, uh, which is the name of the town that I lived in 20 years ago when I first played this game. Oh, hell yeah. I, I myself am having an Allagash White, purely because it's one of my favorites. So I'm just going to nice. refill my cup. Now, of course, uh, for any of you who didn't know, uh, Sean... Bill and I all uh, do game design, so we're going to comment on the design. One of the more interesting things is watch this. Okay, I want you to see what happens when I push this play button. Watch this. Okay. Are you done? You're just in the game now. Whoa. Lightning speed. Go. I'm glad we had that opening cutscene because otherwise I would not know what the hell is going on. Yeah, because yeah. it, it just says play and you click it and now you're just here. So see, here's the game. Let me actually just up the game speed to something that's not ungodly. You know. Wait, what does the speed bar do? It just makes him animate faster. Bill, Ooh. Bill, this was before uh, we knew how to sync to clock cycles. Like this was oh. this, the speed of this game is literally based on your clock. Oh, okay. Like it's, well, that it's makes on sense. your processor. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. See, now for any of you who are unfamiliar with the point-and-click adventure games of old, you have these options like walk, and if I right-click, I can pick up or touch, look at, or talk to. So for instance, jacked at how much you can look at. Rocks abound on this lush volcanic isle. 
<laughs> the ocean appears calm, but there's a dimpling pattern to the surface which indicates an undertow. I feel like this is a... Yeah, look, and you can, like, talk to the rocks? The yep. rocks are silent, as they have been for ages untold. <laughs> Who is that that voice actor? I feel like he was in, you know, like, like uh, the I don't know Bob Newhart show or something, or, or, or you know what I'm saying? Like, I have no idea. I have no idea. Alexander's 1960s. royal insignia ring lies abandoned on the sand. It must have slipped from his finger during the shipwreck. Fortunately, it was not lost in the sea. I mean, that is fortunate. Sounds like legendary anchorman Bill Curtis. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. Oh, oh, actually, I gotta, I gotta show everyone something. Here's, here's how this game works. Just watch this. The ocean is not as calm as it appears. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. Don't ignore that warning, Sean. See, and and see, it, it's not like in other games your screen turns red, and it starts to like the music pitch goes up. But here, are guys, like. It's tugging at your feet. It's yes. nippling at the sacks and partials hanging off the waist of Alexander. <laughs> Just way too much information. So if you the click again, the underwater toe is amazingly strong here. It pulls ferociously at Alexander's legs. Mm. Before mm. Alexander can retreat, the current grabs his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. This is the audiobook for Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> the currents around the island pull Alexander under. <laughs> As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. <laughs> the game That's is actually this is actually the only win state in the entire game. <laughs> Tickets up. And then you go into a bony vagina. Nothing like getting swept off your feet. And that's it. And and get, look at this. Restore is save game. So if you didn't save, Nothing guess what? Nothing like getting swept off your feet. You hit restart, and it just reboots the whole fucking game. <laughs> the, uh, the whole thing. It just starts it over. It restarts the entire copyrighted game. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> All right, so now that we've gotten the basic intros out of the way, I'm, I'm actually going to start playing this game. Let's wander around. Yeah. Let's look at some stuff. Guys, That's help cool. me out. Instruct right, me. This. I'm excited. Air, air today. This is the second King's Quest title to, uh, to have be subtitled with a pun on the word air. Oh, really? Yeah. What was the first one? Like, air, was, uh, and you uh, glad you got... <laughs> 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 to, to air is human, I think was. Uh, oh, was, was oh. Two or three, maybe. That's way too upper crust because that joke only appears to like ten people to be funny, it's, right? You have to air actually is able to pronounce truth. the word. Like it's mm. not a visual pun; it's an audio. Pun. Alexander picks up his royal mm -hmm. insignia ring from the beach. All right. Oh, listen. should we set some sort the of reminder to save the game periodically? White sand. Mm. I think it's. I think it's save the game, Sean. You know what? I'm gonna do it. We picked up the royal ring. Let's save it. We made progress. We got points. Mostly. <laughs> Mostly. Uh oh. All right. Save. All you right. Need to put your uh, descriptive keycaps back on. Is there anything that I should look at? The island is covered take. with lush green Look at the uh, look at the shipwreck. Yeah. What's the shipwreck right. got? For the us? remains of Alexander's sailing ship lie dashed upon the distant shore. Dashed. Dashed. You, oh my don't God. say dashed anymore. No one <laughs> says dashed. I mean, what, would, what, what context would that be? Like, the remnants of an empty pizza box lay dashed on my bed. Dashed it's, is only ever in reference to against rocks. Uh, is that so? Uh, is yeah. that actually true? I think so. That, that sounds like it's true. Because I mostly, I would think to hear it in, like, Game of Thrones, when somebody's head gets dashed against the, the cobblestones. Oh, right. right. Yeah, so it's it's out. Right. Now, you might think that you're starting to hear voices, but those high-pitched squeaks are actually birds. Isn't that beautiful? Are they? That's not an audio error. No, those are birds. They're the, those they're are, those the, are clearly birds, Sean. They're the day-nine song of the day. <laughs> to the left, a small village seems to 
the weary traveler. Oh. <laughs> Seems to <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. Wait, what? To the left, a small village seems to invite the weary traveler. That was just the the uh, the sound card. In the distance, yeah. a majestic castle shines in the sun. You know, uh... I want I want to create a game right now. I'm going to okay. ask the chat. We got to pick one word, and whenever the narrator says that one word, we all have to take a drink. Oh shit! And it has to be something uh, of of fantasy esque nature. You know, like dash lush. Prince, it can't be Alexander because look at this. If I try to talk to a rock, the rocks are silent oh. as they have been for yeah, ages untold. Okay, let me let me look at myself. Alexander searches for a way to reach the black-haired girl whose memory will not escape him. Oh, it's nice that they tell us that. Oh, so I can. Alexander promises himself that he will not go home until he has determined. I don't really feel anything. All right, all right. So I see this hole here. A hollow yes. in the trunk of the old tree forms a perfect nesting place for wildlife. For Alexander, go in. Uh, is there, right, let me, is let, there wildlife in there? Let me is finger there, it. I'm thinking <laughs> you're gonna either have to the trees stick, hollow, but finds nothing of interest. You're gonna either have to stick a bird or a pipe in there. Alexander can now. see no reason to <laughs> clamber pipe? about on the old tree. He would only scar its bark. Wow. God. He's got such respect for trees. I know. Let's, uh, let's hit the village. What do you think? You know, I'm, I like village. All right, I'm going to just try to talk to the grass. Hello. Dude. Is anyone about? Whoa. Alexander gets no reply. <laughs> See, let me just know that this is what makes these old games so just gives you that. <gasps> because there's nothing sparkling. Nothing's trying to let you know that you can interact with it. I just talk to grass. And I got there's a, oh, there's there was there's literally a case for that. Like somebody wrote narrative yeah. for the case that you try to talk to the the to the grass. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. This, this would be the extraneous bullshit engineer, and that's his whole job is to just take the cases of stupid things people do. What happens if I talk to the table? It's like the table gives no reply, as it is made largely of wood and not mouths. Yes, they have to send that off to the guy that talks, and he has to be like, "Are you serious? This is what Ooh. this this is actually an evolution of the original like parser game, where you didn't have icons to click. You just literally <laughs> typed in what you wanted to do. Oh yeah, and then and then like the possibilities were endless, and they had to write responses for literally anything that you could type into the parser. An old so beggar good. is peddling his wares in the village. He offers a variety of lamps, all neatly lined up on a long pole. Oh, well, granted, given that we're in sort of Agrabah here, I'm going to say that that lamp's got some genies up in it. Ooh, that's right, because this game has literally no creativity when it comes to fantasy archetypes. Like, the pirate has an eye patch and a red and white striped bandana and a pet parrot and a peg leg. Like, 100% of pirates have that. Good day, peddler. <laughs> Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking <laughs> old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? <laughs> There's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. See, I think you just prepped us for a genie. You know, let me, let me, let me hit him with the finger. The old man, like most peddlers, is not interested in Alexander's empty hand. Ugh. Why would a peddler want your empty hand? Go okay, talk to that woman. You wouldn't. That's the point, Bill. She showed I can, up. I can use my ring on him. Would you on. accept this in exchange for one of your lamps, peddler? I am only interested in old lamps, son. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's what I always say. They've made it pretty clear. We, you know. Yeah. Hmm. 
Alexander examines the large pot. It's currently empty, but a few scraps in the bottom indicate that it is used as a dump site on occasion. What? See, I don't know if, like, almost none of this is useful. It's just flavorful. So, but now I have to use every verb on it, so I touch it, let's look at it. A large round pot is one of the pottery pieces on display outside the shops. <laughs> you think? Hello! Is anyone here? No one answers Alexander's shouted greeting. Perhaps he should find someone specific to talk to. <laughs> Maybe you should learn how to play the game. Maybe you anti-social idiot, you should talk to a person. Old for new! Old <laughs> laps for new! Why you can't we have that kind of voice acting anymore? You know... So good. Yeah, I mean, it's always... It's, it's always this... Who's the guy who did, um... All the main characters in like Bioshock and Last of Us and in Arkham Asylum. What's his name? Ashley Birch. <laughs> Old <laughs> laps <laughs> for new. Old right. laps for new. All right, I'm going in. Sean, if you have an uh, uh, if you have an old lamp, you can get a new. So let me just let me just poke this door. There it is. Good day. Whoa. I remember this guy. I like this. Let guy. me let me touch the bear. The stuffed bear probably has stuffed fleas. Alexander decides to keep his distance. Oh, that is a hell of a pose. You're right. Yeah, look at the look at this flexing muscle bear. <laughs> All right, let's let's give him a chat. Good day, merchant. Can you tell me what land this is? By the moon's light, what a question! You must have been out too long in the sun, or perhaps knocked your head up on a rock. Whoa! Uh, no. Well, perhaps. I was in a shipwreck, you see. My crew and I were trying to reach the land of the Green Isles. I think, well, at least I hope, my men got away safely in the lifeboats. But I myself appear to be rather stuck here. Ah, I see. You must pardon my incredulity, but it has been so long since we have had a foreign visitor. You wrecked your ship, young traveler, due to the currents and reefs around the islands. If your crew was wise enough to steer clear of the islands and head home, they should be fine. In any case, you have met your objective, however bumpy the journey. You mean, this is the land of the Green Isles? Oh, thank the heavens! I had followed the stars, you see, and, and I thought I was close, but... The stars? You <laughs> must be quite a sailor. But what is the purpose of your visit? <laughs> he just... I come for... Well, I mean, I, I hope to see... I met some time ago. <laughs> that is to say... Say no more. <laughs> you are smitten with a maiden, are you not? <laughs> what other than love could so confuse a man's tongue? I am afraid so. Oh, it man. Is Princess Cosima. By the desert sands, when you fall in love, <laughs> you do not mess around, do you? Is she here? This is the Isle of the Crown, young man. The castle of the crown stands on the hill. If it is Cosima you seek, that is where to look. The castle of the crown. Thank you, merchant. And good luck to you, lad. You shall need it. You know, I, I love this guy, because no matter what you say to him, he's like, By the... Fill in the blank, fill in the blank. <laughs> like... <gasps> by the stony mountain, this is the isle. Oh, by the watery shores. You've come they're to the really, right place. They're trying to sell the, like, Arabian Desert thing, but I'm pretty sure they're on a small island, and there is no desert. Yeah. Like... Well, I mean, that's that's the way that these games work, is that, like, there is an exactly, like, 20 meter by 20 meter area that they strongly define as the desert. And next <laughs> to that is the swamp, and 20 meters beyond that is the forest. And then the yeah. castle. The desert's never going to be more than three screens, man. So, I don't know if this is a lamp or a telescope. I can't tell with the resolution. Alexander takes a closer look at the items on the counter. You need to close up now. Oh, yeah. Mm. A flute? I see you have noticed my mechanical nightingale. She is made of plain tin, but she sings the sweetest song you can imagine. Barely distinguishable from the real thing. 
I know what you can do with the nightingale, Sean. What can we do with the nightingale? You can shove I, it up your... <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know a hollow that is uh, a perfect hiding spot for all sorts of wildlife. Ah! I, I can throw a flute. Yeah, a flute would fit in there, too. Dude, let me, let me tell you, there <laughs> it's is... like a pipe. <laughs> well, yeah, because there comes a point where you just try to shove everything and everything else and try to see if yeah. it works. You're like, what is he? Does he want a lamp? Let me try to give him a, a coin and a flute. I remember when we were um, we were playing King's Quest Seven. There's this guy who you just show him an item and he tells you a rhyme with that item. So if that you showed him a flute, he would talk about an old sailor boot. And you, 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 there was a there was a ring of cheese in a pond, and and Sean and I had to get it. We needed the pond cheese. Um, because we were going to give it to another living creature we cared about, and it had been floating in a pond for days, so we figured we're so nice. Fucking adventure game logic. So, we, so, we, we couldn't get it. You'd reach for it and be like, well, I can't do that. I'll fall in and get wet. And I'm like, so get fucking wet and dry off and get the cheese! Like, it made no sense, but, you know, adventure game logic. And what you had to do was take a really important, valuable book give it to the guy, and then he would give you a hook oh. that you could use. And the only way Sean and I figured that out is by, like, we were showing him, like, rings and, like, sheep <laughs> and sticks. And he kept saying things that were almost awful. He's like, what a perfectly broken stick. How about a fat deer tick? Like, <laughs> little rhyming, man. Be careful. All right, so I'm going to look at the other things real fast. The flute is only made of plain wood, but its notes are fine and true. Ah, yes, the painter's brush. It was well used by one of the island's best painters. There's a lot of creativity in that brush, and its bristles are still in good condition. Mm. That's not how creativity works. <laughs> I think, I think you're mistaken, Bill. Apple would disagree. You just need the computer. <laughs> and you can do anything. Have you an interest in tinder boxes? This one is only slightly battered. It holds a good supply of flint, a sturdy striking pad, and even a candle in case you find yourself with naught else to hold the flame. So that will be used in the lamp. I don't know. You know what, let me... I'm. Which one do we take? Uh, I bird. say we take the bird. Let's yeah, let, let me let me finger the bird really fast. I'm it's interested in that mechanical nightgown on the counter. <laughs> in a, what do you desire to give me in trade? The items on the front counter are all of equally slight value, worth only a copper or two. They are handy items nonetheless. So what does that mean? So let me just Can give you trade him... your your ring, your important Can you identification tell me, ring what the value of this ring might be? By the sands of the sea, what a beauty! <laughs> what fine gold and masterful artistry! <laughs> this ring is quite valuable, sir. I would not feel right taking it in trade. None of the items on display at my humble store are even close to the value of this ring. Oh. How about the bear? Can we get the bear? <laughs> well, it would be hard to part with it anyway, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, you shouldn't sell your signet ring, right? That's the one that lets yeah. people write letters. So, wait, let me see if this vase is anything. If Alexander wants anything from the pawn shop, he'll have to first give the pawn shop owner something in trade. Oh, I know. What's so with we, the bat wings in the back? I don't know. Why? Alexander prefers to keep his leather jerkins firmly on the ground. What? <laughs> This this is almost like too fan. This assumes that you know about like it's, harpooning and. <laughs> his jerkins, man. They're he's a, pants, aren't they? I don't know. I don't think they're shoes. Like the the sentence is constructed like it's supposed. To Old be lamps for new. <laughs> Oh, shut up! Shut yes. up! What were you saying, Sean? I'm sorry, this old guy. No, just, Jesus. Not. Let's go in the bookstore. Alright, let's go to Ali's books and see what's up. Yeah. Hello. Oh, shit. Whoa. I will be right up. There's an evil dude. Look at that I... cinematographer in, no. at, in, at work. What can I do for you? <laughs> Alright, let me go talk to death really fast. For some <laughs> inexplicable reason. Alexander feels compelled to avoid this hooded old man. 
Sean, maybe that. save your game. Yeah, save oh your game. Oh my god, die. Sean, you you have played these before. <laughs> or overriding. There's a small table near the door that bears a sign. The sign has undergone a number of changes. It once read, 10 pence, but that was crossed out and replaced with 5 pence, then 1 pence, then free. The sign currently reads, take one, please. What is it for? Only one book remains on the table. It looks I like think... the bookshop owner really wants to get rid of that book. Oh, is you that know, what that all means? You know, in modern games, this would just glow. It's true. And you just click on it and be like, got a book. Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so, good sir. Really? Thanks. Really? Thanks. How, how so, old do you think Alexander is, by the way? Uh, old enough to know better. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Okay, so so I want we're gonna we're gonna take a brief break. I want to spend a little bit of time doing uh, some recap, but so we've we've played probably ten minutes of the game. We've done it slowly. Yeah. And I think immediately I'm I'm concerned for this princess because basically this guy just saw a girl in a mirror and was like, I'm taking it at face value, and got in a ship with other people's lives at stake and just went until everything got shipwrecked and he came to and someone said, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm looking for a girl and didn't mention the probably hundreds of people that died in this shipwreck. He just, he got to shore, he's like, they're probably fine. All right, the girl. <laughs> like, that, is, vision. that is exactly what he said. My favorite part of that sort of like backstory note is how the, the pawn shop keeper said, uh, you know, they'll be okay as long as they don't try to approach the island. I mean, so you get shipwrecked in the middle of an ocean. There's nothing but ocean for miles in every direction, except for right in front of you, there's an island. I yeah, mean, it's just, what's really think, happened? It's a really dark implication there, right? Like, yeah, it's just, as long as they just sailed into nothingness, they're probably a lot better than if they came to the island where you are. <laughs> Yeah, this is a little weird. It's uh, he certainly does. He's taking her for granted for sure. And I mean, all we really know of her is that she's, you know, she's uh, she was in um, the Prince of Persia. <laughs> she was in a previous game, although I have no idea what role she played. Apparently, yeah. they met once. Yeah, I think I she was played by a different image in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so what we're going to do is we're going to take an ever so brief break, and when we come back, we're going to continue to play. The show will run about two hours live. It'll be about three 40-minute segments, so stay tuned, because when we return, we're going to do all the more metadating. No, we're not. No, no we're not. No, we're, gonna do mostly no, we're done. No, scratch oh, that. Jesus. All right. Firefly. We are... We're bringing back Firefly. Oh, God. I'm going to mute Bill before he says something more, more <laughs> tragic. All right. And they're muted. <laughs> 